Hey everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video and today we have the review of the Chewy HI12 dual boot version. It runs Windows 10 and Android 5.1. We have the keyboard dock and we have the pen. Stay tuned to find out if it's a buy or a don't buy. So here we have the Chewy HI12 dual boot version. As you know, we unboxed and reviewed the Chewy HI12 Windows only version and we really gave it high marks. I love its screen and I love its battery life and its decent build quality and certainly I love its price. That came in at around $240, $250 and probably less depending on when you buy it. And during a flash sale, you could probably get it anywhere from $235 and up. Well, now they've re-released this device as the dual boot version. As you know, we've unboxed it. It runs both Windows 10 and Android 5.1. In addition, we also have the pen, which was elusive from the beginning, and I finally was able to get one. I got it from banggood.com. I will put the link below to where you can buy it. But getting back to the Chewy HI12 dual boot and its keyboard dock and pen, I think this is a winning combination, ladies and gentlemen. As far as ports are concerned, you get a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. You get micro HDMI out for driving a monitor, nice touch. You get a USB 2.0, micro USB charging port. You get a USB 3.0, a micro SD card slot, and one of your side firing speakers. On the other side, you have your other side firing speaker, and that's it. On the top of the device, you have your power button and your volume rocker up and down. And that's it on the top. You got your front facing webcam and you have a camera on the back. Now, as far as the front of the device, you have your Windows capacitive button, which also serves as the home button in Android 5.1. And on the bottom of the device, you have your pogo pin connectors and your two connectors for your keyboard dock. That goes there. So this is what it looks like in its keyboard dock. It magnetically connects to the device. Now, as far as the dock is concerned, the keyboard does connect to it magnetically and it goes as far back as there. That's as far back as it goes. Any further will tip over the device. So that's as far back as it's gonna go. Now, it's pretty thin and it's not that light. It's pretty substantial in terms of weight, pretty much a, lot, a little bit of heft, especially with the keyboard dock. Here it is alone. You can see the thickness over here. And build quality is pretty good. You got your chamfered edges around the edges here. I don't know if you can see that. Overall, this is a very good package. And as far as the keyboard dock is concerned, the keys are not backlit, they're white keys. And I think I would have preferred a darker key, but you know, you can't have everything. As far as the trackpad is concerned, it's a little bit undersized for my taste. It's a little bit under responsive as well. So I'm hoping to get better results out of its next iteration. But overall, it's a good keyboard dock and let's take a look at it. And what do you get? You get two USB 2.0 ports. You get one there and then you get one there. Nice touch. As far as the keys, they got pretty good key travel, decent click on the trackpad, although it's a bit undersized for my taste. And this is the hinge, as you can see here, where the tablet will connect to the keyboard dock. Now, I wish it had a battery built into the keyboard to give it additional battery life, as we're gonna be seeing very shortly as I'm going to review the Techlast Keybook 10, which has a keyboard dock that has something different than other Chinese tablets we've been seeing lately. It has a built-in battery to give additional juice to the tablet. Now, as far as the screen is concerned, it doesn't disappoint. As you know, when we boxed and reviewed the Chewy HI 12 Windows only version, it's using the Surface Pro 3 panel. And that's a good thing because it has a resolution of 2160 by 1440. It's got excellent viewing angles and good color saturation. I like this screen very much. And I also want to point out another thing. I took off the pre-applied screen protector that it 
came with. I, I assume it's coming from Banggood, where I got it, and they pre-applied it. This does not have Gorilla Glass. But I took it off. And the reason I took it off is because of the pen. As you will see, the pen was leaving a lot of marks. It was ripping it up pretty bad, so I took it off. And once I took it off, I realized something. The screen sensitivity was much better. The touch sensitivity was much better, and it looked overall much better. So I was very happy to see that. So as far as that's concerned, so that's something you're going to have to do at your own risk. But I do recommend that if you want increased pressure sensitivity, take off the screen protector, especially if you're going to use it with a pen. But beware, there's no Gorilla Glass on this, and I'm not sure how the screen will hold up over time. So that's something you will have to decide. I chose to go with this. I'm willing to take one for the team, so to speak. I will let you know how this holds up over time as far as that screen is concerned. Again, it doesn't have Gorilla Glass something I would love to see in future iterations. The other thing I want to point out about the screen is the fact that it's not laminated. And we pointed this out in our Windows version testing and its analysis, and we found that there is a slight gap between the panel and the, as you can see here, there's a slight gap between the panel and the glass. And what that means is it's not going to be as crisp as, say, a Surface Pro 4, which has a laminated screen. Check out that video and our review of the Surface Pro 4 Core M3 edition to see more about that. But that still does not mean this is a deal breaker. The screen on its own looks gorgeous, as you can see, and it really does get very bright. I like the fact that it does get brighter than most of the other Chinese tablets we've seen uh, lately coming out of China. So great job on the color accuracy, color representation, great job on the brightness. I just wish for future iterations that Chewy would make it a laminated screen. If this had a laminated screen, this would be the beast of all beasts. Now, as far as performance is concerned, the Chewy HI12 Android did pretty well. As you can see from the Geekbench test, it did a 727 on the single core score and did a 2059 on the multi core score. Not bad and pretty much on par with what we saw on the Windows side of things. So, as far as performance is concerned, pretty much what we expected. <laughs> Now, as far as the Antutu benchmark, uh, version 6.1.4, it did a 56,989 on that test, which goes over its 3D capabilities, gaming capabilities, and so forth. So, pretty good scores, especially when you compare it to other tablets in this range. As far as the pen is concerned, I'm not sure what technology they're using, but they have pretty much a hard nib on the top. It has two buttons over here, and it is pretty good. It has pretty good pressure sensitivity, pretty good responsiveness when we've used it. As you will see with the one note test, there is palm rejection, as we'll show you, and there is good pressure sensitivity. Now, to demonstrate one note and the pen, I will show you that it does have pressure sensitivity. I'm going to draw a diagonal line, and there you go. See, it's a darker, more pressure you put, the more it will register, although there is a slight delay. It's not terrible, but it does have pressure sensitivity. Let's check out to see if it does have palm rejection. Let's see. Oh, it does. I'm resting my hand on the screen and it is working. So pen, not bad. Works on both Android and Windows. So good news to see the pen is working. You could also use the pen for browsing the web. And one thing I like this over, say, Windows, you could actually scroll with this. So you can do scrolling. Works pretty well, nice touch. Now, one thing I do want to mention about the screen, as you can see, it's a big fingerprint magnet. Something I wanted to see in future iterations is more of an oleophobic coating that would avoid uh, fingerprints. But the pen works as far as Android side of things, and it certainly works on the Windows side of things. Let's switch over to Windows to demonstrate OneNote on there just to make sure. I want to show you something that Chewy implemented. If you want to boot over to Windows, you press the power button. One of the options is to boot into Windows. So I'm going to hit boot into Windows and say OK. Nice touch to get from one operating system to the other. So here's Windows and OneNote. Let's take a look to see how the pen works. I'm going to draw a diagonal line. There you can see it works. As far as pressure sensitivity, it looks like it does the job. Now, if I'm resting my hand, can I still use it? Let's take a look at palm rejection. So I'm resting my hand. Oops, I hit the wrong thing there. So, hello. 
So palm rejection works, good to see that. So this is good for taking notes, for drawing, so forth. You'll be okay with this pen. Now, there is a Switch app that allows you to go between Windows and Android, and here I'm gonna to go to Android, so I'm gonna say yes, and it will boot over to the Android side of things, and we will test the sound. So stay tuned for our sound test, which is coming up right now. In order to test the sound quality, let's take a look and a listen at our latest video, the HP Chromebook 13 G1 unboxing. Everybody, it's Andrew back again with another video, and today we have a special unboxing. Just arrived in our studio, the HP Chromebook 13. It's the Chromebook that was just announced by HP. It has a high-res screen, it's got a Core M processor. As you can hear, the sound is pretty good. Not the best in class, but not the worst either. It is better than most of the Chinese tablets that we've been reviewing lately. So pretty good speakers. Again, not the best, not the worst I've heard. <laughs> So overall, is the Chewy HI-12 with both Windows 10 and Android, dual boot, a buy or a don't buy? I'm gonna have to say it's a definite buy. First, I love its beautiful screen. It's 12 inches, it's an IPS display, it's got excellent viewing angles, and it has good color representation and good color saturation. And I love the fact that they use the same screen as the Surface Pro 3 with its resolution of 2160 by 1440. Although I don't recommend you taking off the screen protector because it does not have Gorilla Glass, I would do it if you want increased sensitivity in terms of the screen. As far as battery life, I like it. I can get anywhere from seven to eight hours on this version. Although on the Windows only version, I was able to get a solid eight hours. This was about an hour less, despite the fact it has a slightly bigger battery. I also like the pen. I found that its pressure sensitivity was good. I found that it registered pretty well on the screen, especially after I took off the screen protector. Although it was a little bit noisy as the hard glass and the hard nib, same problem I had with the X3 Pro and its pen. But at least this had better palm rejection, or at least it had palm rejection, because I couldn't get it to work on my X3 Pro. Here, palm rejection seemed to work fine. <laughs> Well, here's what I don't like about the device. First, I don't like the fact the screen is not laminated. I don't like the fact that there's a slight gap, perhaps a millimeter or so, between the panel and the glass itself. I've said this before in the review of the Windows only version, and I'll say it again here. I wish the screen was laminated. Chewy's next iteration would be great. It would be a real killer if it had a laminated screen, much like the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2, which has a beautiful iPad mini retina display. If they could laminate the screen, this would be a beast. Another thing I don't like about this device is its trackpad. The trackpad on the keyboard dock is a bit undersized for my taste, and I didn't find it as responsive as I hoped it would be. Now, it works in both the Windows side and it works in the Android side. And again, not as responsive as I'd hoped it would be. Now, as far as the keyboard dock itself is concerned, I like the fact that it has two additional USB 2.0 ports, although I would have liked to have seen 3.0. Would have also liked to have seen an extra battery in the keyboard. I know the Techlast T-Book 10 has a keyboard case that's about to be released that has a, a 3000 milliamp battery that's included in the keyboard dock. I wish this had one as well. I would love to see Chewy make one in its next iteration. It would really make this tablet bar none the best so far out of China. Another thing I like is the build quality. Although it's not the greatest build quality in the world, it's not bad. And I like its aluminum construction and the space gray that it uses on this version. There's also a champagne gold one, but I prefer the gray. As far as ports are concerned, I'm not disappointed. It has HDMI out to drive a monitor. It has a USB 3.0 and a USB 2.0. So you have at least a one 3.0, although I wish both were 3.0, at least they have one, so that's not bad. I like the fact that you can expand the storage with this micro SD card slot. I put it on 128 gigabyte SD card or micro SD card, and it seemed to work fine. One thing I'm a little bit disappointed in is in the audio. Although I like the, in the Windows 10 only version, I found this one a little bit tinnier for some reason, and I'm not quite sure why, since it's using supposedly the same hardware. I found that it was a little bit bass challenged and I thought the volume was very good, although it sounded a little bit tinny. So overall, it was decent 
sound on this and a lot better than other tablets from China that we've tested, but not as good as a Surface Pro 4. And I think that's something you need to keep in mind. Although the audio quality wasn't terrible, it wasn't best in class either. Now, as far as Android is concerned, performance-wise, it did okay. Although I wish it ran Marshmallow, unfortunately, it runs Android 5.1 Lollipop, which is a generation behind. And with Android N on its way, I wish this had some way of being updated. And I really don't have faith in Chewy and updating this, not at this price point. Again, you're looking at anywhere from 250 or less on this device. But getting back to Android, it did work fine. The skin wasn't as bad as the tech last in terms of bloatware and spyware. I used the Google Now launcher, and I also have used Nova Prime launcher as well. That's pretty good as well. So it gives you more of a stock Android feel, better than what Chewy offered, although it's not the worst I've seen. That goes to tech last as far as Android side of things is concerned. <laughs> I wish it did have GPS. I wish it did have more space allotted to it. I know most of it went to the Windows side of things. It only gave about nine gigabytes to the user on the Android side of things. So I wish that was improved in its next iteration. So overall, this is the best tablet I've tested so far out of China, especially of the 12-inch tablets. Now, this is on par with the Xiaomi Mi Pad 2. That's my favorite 8-inch tablet with its laminated, beautiful iPad retina screen. Take a look at the review and unboxing that I did. I'll put the links below. But as far as the Chewy is concerned, this is my favorite. Either the Windows only version or the dual boot version, which we have here. Both did great. A little bit better battery life on the Windows only version, but not by much. Maybe about an hour, I would say you get more out of the Windows 10 version. But overall, I think this is a great buy. You can get it on sale at banggood.com for about $230, $240. Check banggood.com. Check my site. Check my links below to see the best price available because they do change periodically. But as far as I'm concerned, this is a definite buy. <laughs> Please hit the like button, please subscribe, don't forget to share this video, and don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below, and let me know what you'd like me to review next, and I will try to make that happen. Stay tuned, we have the full review of the HP Chromebook G1, that's the HP Chromebook 13 G1, that we just unboxed and are really excited about. I love its gorgeous QHD plus screen, that's 3200 by 1800 resolution. I like the Core M Skylake processor, and I love its build quality and look. So stay tuned for the full review, which is coming very soon here at AMD Tech. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.